Hello, Guardians. Welcome back to Tower Casuals, the Destiny podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Corey Deergan. Alongside me, as always, is the World Series champion, Josh Finney. Oh, my fucking God. This, this is going to be like a really like mellow episode, but yeah. So excitement at the very top of the show. I know that we, we've had a few folks request that we not talk about sports, and I, I'm going to try to honor that. I understand not everyone's into it. Guys, uh, allow me a moment of happiness. My team won the World Series for the first time in its very long history. Uh, I watched the final game. I watched uh, Game 5 last night with my dad. Uh, drove out to his house, watched it with him, and uh, yeah, we we were just we were both crying at the end. It, it was beautiful. Um, I am sicker than a dog, but I will be going to the championship parade tomorrow. Very excited for all of you to see the hometown that I grew up in, um, the land of parking lots, the world's most mediocre Six Flags, uh, <laughs> warehouses, and abandoned shopping centers. That that's all that's like around where I where the stadium is. Um, <laughs> Arlington is not a, co- a great happening place. Arlington sucks. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I'm very excited for you guys to see a championship parade that literally is going to circle the both the new and old stadiums, which the, the old stadium is still an absolutely beautiful ballpark. The new one looks like a fucking warehouse. So it's true to Arlington. <laughs> and uh, it's literally going to pass by all of our parking lots. That's where it's going to pass by. It's not going anywhere else because there's nothing close to the stadium. There's been some suggesting, well, why don't you do it in Fort Worth or in Dallas? Because the team is in fucking Arlington. Arlington has done one thing in its history, and that is fight to keep the Rangers in Arlington. Yeah. Um, So I'm thrilled. Uh, I I grew up five minutes from the stadium. Uh, My aunt used to live in the apartments that are literally across the street from Cowboys Stadium now uh, when I was a little kid. So we would walk to Ranger games when I had to stay with her. just really cool. The whole family is playing. My dad cannot go to the parade and he is so upset right now. Why can't he go? Uh, because like half the people at his job have called off and he is the manager. Hmm. That would, and uh, that would yeah, so he was told he could not have the day off by his boss. He is very upset. Uh, I wouldn't say inconsolable. He's a grown ass man. He's fine. Um, He's happy that I'm going to go. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to meet up with some old friends. Um, I drove by the stadium last night uh, after I left his place. It, it's it's about 15 minutes from where I live. And I, I drove out there, drove by it. People were celebrating deep into the night uh, in and around the stadium. Um, went to uh, went by where one of the old pubs uh, that a lot of Ranger players from that uh, that great 2011 disaster team uh hung out at uh, Sherlock's, which no longer exists, uh, that when I was 19, I used to dream of getting to go in there and have a beer with a ranger. Uh, had a couple beers in the parking lot with some old friends. So it, was, it was a good time. It was it was a very nostalgic evening. All the years of me uh, sneaking out of my high school to go to like opening day and uh, cutting cutting class in college and cutting summer classes to go to the, go to the cheap Wednesday afternoon games, the sun beating down on my face because baseball in Texas during the summer is hot, guys. No, we didn't have not. we didn't have a roof until like two years ago when they built a new stadium. So uh, just just anything you can imagine. Uh, I have suffered through it as a Ranger fan. Uh, I was saying this in the Discord earlier. The amount of playoff series we've won in our sixty three year history up until this year, you could count on one hand. They have sucked ass my entire life. We finally didn't suck ass for a year, and uh, we got a world championship out of it. So it was really emotional last night, um, seeing former players down on the field and uh, finding out who how, who of the old players work for the general manager now. Like yeah. four or five of our legendary players like all work in the front office now, so they will all get championship rings, which is really cool. Yeah. Um, Man, I just I can't say enough cool things. It's awesome when uh, sp- sports are such a trivial thing, but when uh, when your team wins it all, it's 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 beautiful. So all three of the teams that I religiously follow and cheer for uh, have now won a title. Um, this is better than when the Seahawks won the Super Bowl. This is on par with Dirk getting a ring. Hmm. Hmm. Um, Dirk. Man, love Dirk. 
Dirk, I was happy. I mean, I was happy for the Mavs to get it, but Dirk, Dirk was a true legend who deserved a championship ring. He, he was robbed of it in 2006. It was the last thing he needed to cement his legacy as one of the greatest of all time. Because uh, M- in NBA, they care about championships and postseason success and ring culture and all that. MLB doesn't really give a shit. It's like, how good were you as like a teammate? And uh, I'm thrilled that this group of guys did it. Um, you know, you, you listen to any of the post game stuff, and like literally none of them would take individual credit, which is very funny. Like the guy that we're paying three hundred twenty five million dollars to, two time World Series MVP Corey Seager, by the way, um, one of only four to ever do that. That's really that's a really small list. Um, refused to take like any sort of individual credit. It, it was very weird to watch. I've never, I don't think I've ever watched a championship celebration like that. And like every other league, it's like when the superstar comes, it's like, uh, they're like, fuck yeah, I was awesome. Nope. Nope. Our closer was like in disbelief when it happened. Our radio announcer cried on air. Oh, wow. He's, he, our, our radio announcer. Last thing I'll say on this, um, you know, I, it's a name that's not familiar to anybody who grew up outside of North Texas, but Eric Nadell has been calling Ranger games on the local radio for 45 years. He has seen three or four different stadiums in that time frame. He has seen a lot of losing baseball. Um, and he took, he stepped away this year. Earlier this year, he took about two-thirds of the season off for mental health struggles. I mean, he's he's in his 70s. Uh, so it took some time away for depression and things like that. He came back and uh, came back when the Rangers were at like their lowest this season. And then they go on this miracle run. He calls the final out and he's, he's like in disbelief on the call. You can hear, you can hear like his co host like starting, starting to cry a little bit. And he, he finally gets choked up because he says it's over like three different times. And by the third time he, it, it sounds like he, he finally believes it. Mm-hmm. Um, the final thing he says on the call um, before, you know, they start cutting down to people getting interviewed uh, down on the field is, uh, the demons of 27 are once and forever gone. They are finally gone. And that was like the moment, I think, for a lot of us lifelong fans. It was over. My dad's been a fan since like 1975. And they didn't even win a playoff series until 1990 or excuse me, they weren't even in the playoffs until 1998. They didn't win a playoff series until 2010. Like this is, this is not a good franchise. Historically, historically we suck. We're, we're the Cleveland Browns of major league baseball. Oh man. That's that hurts. I mean, it's not inaccurate. Okay, no. we're more like the we're the, we're the Detroit Lions of They're Major good League this Baseball. Year. <laughs> we're the, we're the Detroit Lions of Major League Baseball. Um, you know, you you come in with high hopes. You have a very dedicated fan base, and you just keep sucking year after year. Uh, but yeah, la- final note on it before we get in, we get into the really serious conversations we got to have this week. Um, it was awesome. That's a really cool thing that happened this week. It's about the only good thing that's happened this week. Not true. Um, the Seahawks beat the Browns. The Seahawks did beat the Browns. I was going to skip over that for your sake. Yeah, um, God, I fucking love Devin Witherspoon. Um, yeah. PJ P. Walker sucks. PJ Walker sucks. Um, I'm going to pull up. I'm going to pull up this ridiculous blog post that we have to read tonight, too. Yeah. Uh, now that the joyous occasions are over. <laughs> Yeah, should, should I just like launch into the bullshit of the week? Look, we might as well just kick the door down. Let's we're, we're just going to kick the door down. So sorry. Sorry for those of you who uh, who have asked us to stop talking about sports. I shared five minutes, probably 10 minutes of happiness with you uh, because the rest of this episode is going to be really depressing. Yeah, if you've been living under a rock this week. For, so to start off, we're, there's no lore corner this week. We get we got some like, you know, kind of normal questions. We're going to skip those this week. All we're going to talk about is the incident that happened on Monday with Bungie um, and the fall, subsequent fallout from. Because there's a lot of fallout that's happened. Yeah. So this has, uh, been real <sighs> tough to like. <laughs> I couldn't believe what I was reading half of the time. I can't believe that we woke up to this. Um. Yeah. So Monday morning, um, as a lot of us are waking up, we start seeing tweets from some Bungie employees. Liana is the first one that I saw tweeting about it. And it wasn't even like that she was fired yet. It was, man, I'll never get over the sensation of being in game dev 
and seeing a meeting that you didn't schedule pop up on your calendar all of a sudden is urgent. You know, you see all these stories about layoffs and you're always like, man, I hope that's not me this time. And then like an hour later, she comes back to that and goes, well, I was just laid off. Yeah. And I, uh... I collectively, I think we were all like, what the fuck? Like, we we're like, it, it, was it just her? And huh. the, the horror of the situation would become apparent over the next like three hours. Yeah. I, uh, I reached out to her just to, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. I mean, I doubt I'll get a response, but yeah, you know, um, you know, of course, Jason Schreier gets on the case. Uh, when Jason gets involved, it's never a good thing. Yeah. Like, it's not a good thing for the company. I'll put it that way. <laughs> um, he, yeah. he shared a, a memo that Pete Parsons had sent out there basically asking employees not to talk about this with each other and yeah. that they were going to have a meeting to explain the situation later on in the day. Yeah. Along with that, we're going to present the timeline, then we'll dissect everything. He, he also, Jason also announces to the world, um, the final shape has been delayed to June, 2024 and marathon is pushed to 2025. Yeah. Well, I, I feel like we kind of knew that about marathon, but yeah, it, it, we, we had said the most optimistic target was going to be q4 2024 yeah um so all that happens and as as the day's going on it's getting more and more horrifying we're finding out more details about who's being let go and what exactly is happening um i I want to just low level people either or no it's it's so wide ranging we're finding out about you know this is and this is all happening the day before halloween mind you on a monday morning yeah um I mean, we'll get into some of the more specifics when we start dissecting things. But uh, overnight, uh, about t- about nine ten o'clock that evening, a rumor starts that Michael Salvatore has been let go. And so up yeah. to this point, we have found out that among very prominent people that the larger community knows, Liana's been let go. Sam has been let go. Griffin, who runs all their social media, has been let go. Mm-hmm. The rumor starts that Michael Salvatore, the longtime composer of the series, has like been, pre-Halo. <laughs> he has been there since before Halo. Him and Marty were partners back in the day that Michael Salvatore has been let go. That was the straw that broke the camel's back for most of the community. Yeah, that was rough to see. Um, the community- I got to say, I got to say before we move on from go, go, ahead, go ahead, his message that he left after was a class act his, his you know his his message for uh when when he was let go yeah it was a class act um i i personally liked uh updating his bio on his website to gone fishing yeah and his uh, his compo- one of his composing partners was also let go he posted the same thing gone fishing with mike yeah. um so that that happens overnight and the next morning we're like what the fuck happened uh, Jason comes out, reports that 8% of Bungie was let go, approximately 100 employees, um, which the studio definitely confirmed that the studio was way bigger than we thought it was. Yeah. We had the numbers projected for this, and I guess numbers were reported a while back, and I just completely yeah. missed it. I had it pegged at, like, maybe 900 at the absolute most. Yeah, I had always heard eight or 900. But... Um, <laughs> I mean, they went on such a huge hiring spree, they were apparently over 1,200 employees there. Yeah, um, that happened. He he does some great reporting. Rebecca Valentine does some awesome reporting at IGN. We're going to read from part of her report. Uh, Paul Tassi, of course, get to the bottom of some stuff. You know, there's nobody on the Destiny case like Paul Tassi. Yeah. Um, between the three of them, all these stories are coming out about what's happening to the employees. What ha- And it's all happening on Halloween. Mm-hmm. Um, the By yesterday... On Wednesday, the dust had kind of settled. We more more people were coming out and being like, "Yeah, I got fired on Monday." There was one person who said they got fired yesterday, and I, I'm going to yeah. read their tweets in a minute. Said they got fired yesterday, but they knew on Monday night that they were going to be fired because they saw their specific role listed on Bungie Careers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, just a completely and and then it's all followed up by maybe the most like generic post I've ever seen. Um, and we're, I'm gonna read. I'm gonna read this to to end all this. I'm gonna read this this statement. Is this because, the blog post or is this Pete Parsons? <laughs> well, thing? okay. I should read. I should read what Pete Parsons said first. Um, some of the dunks on this were absolutely. Oh God, I got to go through so many baseball posts now on my feed. Um, I had it pulled up. Uh, do 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 do. I still just in trying to wrap my head around all this. Pete Parsons, 
Pete Parsons tweets out the afternoon of October the 30th, as all these layoffs have happened, he tweets out around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, Central Standard Time. Today is a sad day at Bungie as we say goodbye to colleagues who have all made significant impact on our studio. What these exceptional individuals have contributed to our games and Bungie culture has been enormous and will continue to be a part of Bungie long into the future. These are truly talented people. If you have openings, I would highly recommend each and every one of them. My guy, you're the fucking CEO of the company. What the fuck? You can't fire 100 people and then tell others to go hire them. And this is undercut by what comes out the next day. He apparently told people in an all-hands meeting, while this is happening, the people who are still here are the people that we we trust to make our games. Michael fucking Salvatore isn't a part of that? Yeah. Your communications and comms teams aren't a part of that? Yeah. They yeah. fired... The, the One of the people they fired was the person who made the original Halo logo, by the way. Yeah. Like, what the actual fuck happened here is yeah. what I want to know. Yeah, I believe the words that he said were, we kept the right people yes. to continue making... Yeah. I... Man... I'm, I'm, got, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hold some did comments you, for a second. Did you uh, see I got, what damage said? I, I did see what damage said. Uh, it echoed what a lot of people said. I, I want to read this blog post and then we'll just we'll dive into all of it. Today, in lieu of a Schwab, we got a we got like a 300 word blog post. Yeah. Um. First off, way to read the room and not give us a Schwab. I think there would have literally been a march on Bungie. Yeah. Um. God, our path forward. This has been one of the most difficult weeks in our studio's history as we parted ways with people we respect and admire. We spent this week supporting one another, including those who are at the studio, as well as friends and colleagues who no longer are. We want to acknowledge the feedback and concerns you have about Lightfall in recent seasons, as well as your responses to the reveal of the final shape. We know we have lost a lot of your trust. Destiny needs to surprise and delight. We haven't done this enough, and that's going to change. To us, the path is clear. We need to make the final shape an unforgettable Destiny experience. We want to build something that will be regarded alongside the best games we've ever made. A fitting culmination and honors the journey we've been on together for the past 10 years. Forsaken, the Witch Queen, and the Taken King. These are the standard bearers we aim to live up to. We are intensely focused on exceeding your expectations for the final shape. Destiny 2 has more than 650 dedicated teammates pouring all their energy and expertise into delivering this epic moment and subsequent episodes. In the weeks ahead, you'll be hearing more from us about what's next on the short-term horizon, beginning with our next season in late November. Afterwards, we'll begin to unpack our team's bigger, bolder, and brighter vision for the final shape, as well as the bridge we plan to build to take us all out of this darkness and into the light. See you, Starside, the Destiny 2 dev team. I, man, it's, <laughs> I, it's... <laughs> Man, I just I want to know who wrote this because, uh, like, if it's coming from someone who, like, you know, like, yeah, I don't know, but like, if this is just some generic PR message, that's what it reads like. I right? mean, that's it's what like, this is. that's exactly what this is. Like, yeah. let's not cut corners here. Yeah. This is a generic ass PR message that Cosmo and Andy Salisbury were told to write up, yeah. and there is no way not every single word of this post was not personally dictated and vetted by Pete Parsons. Yeah. Um, specifically the line that specifically gets me, uh, we'll begin to unpack our team's bigger, brighter, bolder vision for the final shape, as well as the bridge we plan to build to take all, us all out of this darkness and into the light. Yeah. And, um, my guy, you're the CEO. You created this problem. Like Pete Parsons is being rightfully dragged through the fucking fire for this. Yeah, for I, everything that's happened this week, because, you know, well, I, I guess let's just get into it. I, I think that, you know, Corey and I both have long regarded and the industry as a whole has long regarded Bungie as like this beacon of inclusivity and positivity and like the ideal studio you want to work for the yeah. ideal studio environment. The first crack in that really was the sexual harassment story that Rebecca Valentine reported uh, two years ago. Yeah. Leading into the Witch Queen, and well, the, the uh, one that we talked about a couple weeks ago, right? Well, I, that's what I'm saying. The first crack, and then we had the one a couple weeks ago, and we were like, mm, okay, don't really know about this one. Um, now things are starting to make more sense. Some of the stories that we've heard from folks who got laid off apparently, the QR, the QA team was very quietly being dismantled over the month of October, yeah. Um, people were coming into the office, they were finding out that they're 
they were coming in and like people were finding out they had already been let go before they were in meetings because their email access had already been revoked or their mm-hmm. key cards weren't working. Um, they weren't allowed to talk to uh, other employees on the way out. They were told not to talk to their fellow employees or talk publicly about the situation at hand. Um, yeah. I also saw someone say that they were called to this meeting and they couldn't even get in the door because their key card had already been, uh, you know, yep. Uh, yep. deleted from the yep. system or whatever. And it's, it's pe- I want to be really clear. Like it's not, it's not just people that are low on the ladder. I mean, this is, there's people who reach back before halo that were let go, you know, Michael Salvatore. So we keep landing on, but he's, he's literally synonymous with Bungie at this point. Yeah. Um, th- that that's other very much like go to, it's it's very much a Marty O'Donnell situation, um, in that regard. Because I mean, remember when uh, when Marty and um, Joe Staten were let go yeah. back in uh, early 2014? Yeah, and that that was always seen as like an Activision and like Jason Jones move. I, I'd like to know where I want to know where Joe Blackburn comes down on this, and Justin Shrewman. I want to know where they come down on this. I want to know like. What hand did uh, franchise directors Mark Noseworthy and Luke Smith have in this? I want to know, like, how much of this came from the top? Did any of it come from outside? You know, yeah. there there have been a wave of layoffs within Sony. I'm not suggesting that Sony is solely responsible for this. Paul Tassi's reporting makes it pretty clear that it's it's not a, just a Sony thing. Yeah, I heard that, it. This is, I mean, this is what I read from a couple of people. I don't know how true this is. It might not be true at all, but uh, the layoffs, the layoffs at Bungie are kind of part of Sony's restructuring of their financial situation and that mm. Pete Parsons was in charge of who to let go. So Pete Parsons being in charge of who to let go very much like, I don't know who else at the studio would have the authority to let some of these people go. I'll be, yeah. I'll be Frank. Yeah. Um, I don't know about like Sony's restructuring. Like, yeah, I, I would, I would trust Paul's reporting on that one. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I said, there I don't were know a lot of very dubious claims that came out in the hours after yeah. a lot of people who suddenly were experts on studio management. Right. I mean, uh, that's how it always goes. Right? <laughs> I love social media. Um, but I mean, God, so, some of the stuff that, you know, we were we were hearing that day from employees. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm going back to. Uh, I'm going, I'm going back to some of the things that that I was that I was seeing, uh, some of my reactions and whatnot. Um, man, uh, one one of the big things that uh, <laughs> that I that I was thinking is like this whole situation has a very like Michael Scott feel to it. Yeah, I saw that you tweeted. That. Um, but um, also, you know. Jeff, Jeff Keighley tweeted this on the 28th about the sheer quality and scale of games this year has been really unprecedented. Can you think of another year with so many incredible releases? And that sparked another conversation that we've had before this year yeah. about there's like 6,000 people who lost their jobs before the Bungie incident this week. Yeah. Like you need to mention that that's, that's the biggest story of the year is record profits, record layoffs. Yeah. Um, and now this is happening to Bungie who I think a lot of us thought was impenetrable Yeah. to this. Um, I'd like to draw attention real quick. So we know they laid off like 8% of the studio in the blog post today. They mentioned 650 individuals are working on destiny still. Yeah. So any, any idea y'all have about, Oh, well, this, this is what happens when you know, there's wind down and MMO. shut the fuck up. Just shut the fuck up. Like you don't, you don't know what you're talking about because 650 people. That's a lot of people to be working on one game. Yeah. And for a game that has struggled it, with putting content into a game, I don't understand how you have 650 people working on this. Yeah, the um the kind of average game like uh, like a God of War or Horizon has 150 to 200 people max with some outsourcing, right? Well, you have a lot of outsourcing on those games though. Well, I mean, Look, look how long those credits are, man. Yeah, I know, I know, but I'm saying like that's generally what kind of that's what a studio works on right is like i get the outsourcing there's there's various degrees of outsourcing but the, you know. the comparison i was seeing was Baldur's gate 3 you know the best reviewed game of the year had 400 studio employees at larian working on it i didn't think their studio was that big it is in fact that big yep larian is that big um 650 people though and that means that the team that's working on Marathon is like 150-ish, probably. You have a couple projects in incubation, if those are even still going at this point. Um, 
there were a bunch of claims that were made last night uh, by Astacross that I'll get to in a few minutes. I, I want to keep talking about. I want to talk about the people before we talk about the products. Um, oh, man, I just <laughs> Michael Seacrest was the other uh, was the other composer, by the way. That was like, yeah. oh, he is uh, best known as the composer of the Deep Stone Lullaby and the Whisper of the Worm Suite. Mm-hmm. Uh, those were directly from him. Um, God. So some of the info that we got about the Bungie layoffs, um, we got this on Halloween from Paul Tassi. Layoff decisions came directly from Bungie management, not Sony. This is not about Sony replacing Bungie employees with their own people. Employee benefits, except for health insurance, only last until the end of the month if you're let go. Laying people off on the 30th meant a single additional day of coverage. So that meant uh, things like expense reports, for example. (laughs) Yeah. Many employees. uh, This is the big one. This is the big one right here. And I suspect this is this is part of why they did these mass layoffs. Maybe they didn't need to necessarily, but they did this because Bungie is Bungie. Many employees had unvested shares as a result of the Sony purchase. These shares would be received based on staying with the company for a certain number of years following the sale. But those shares revert to Bungie if you leave, even if you're fired, which is what's happening now to many of those affected. Um. So yeah, shares of the shares of the the purchase the 1.2 billion dollars that was given to them to retain employees yeah. now goes to the studio that blows my fucking mind and that explains why you're seeing some of these senior people being like oh who have been there for 20 something years yeah they would have gotten a ton of shares well yeah you know now they don't have to worry about that um god dude i just i, I i'm sitting here still in complete and total disbelief um, this is, this is, this is crazy. Um, man, what, like, I don't even, I don't even know, I don't even know what to say. Like, yeah, there, there is nothing to say. I'm going to, I'm going to get Rebecca's article pulled up because I think it's really important for us to read, um, part of hers as well. Part of her reporting. Yeah. Um, Bloomberg's, so- we got a lot of that via tweets, thankfully. Man, there's been over 8,000 people laid off in the game industry this year right uh no, okay no so uh, i want i want to read this um paul, paul points this out before we get into rebecca's article paul points this out also um this is part of a wider sony problem games as a service bet and investments in vr and the xbox fight and all the rest bungie chose these cuts and how to do them badly but sony is facing clear headwinds spider-man and ps5 sales aside larger issues are going on here that is that is a larger concern being shared within the industry yes their sales are phenomenal. Their profits are not. Yeah. Because they've spent so much on R&D on the Bungie purchase. The Bungie purchase hasn't, you know, panned out the way they thought. They've put... <laughs> Bungie recommended they put The Last of Us multiplayer game on ice. Yeah. Like, and they're clearly pivoting away from games as a service with Jim Ryan leaving. Like, yeah. the Bungie purchase in a wider context right now kind of looks like a bit of a disaster. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Um, now with all the internal problems that we're finding out about here, because that's part of what Rebecca dives into. Um, God, <laughs> um, this is such a disaster, man. Employees. Right, so we're, we're going to read, we're going to read, uh, we're going to read a lot of this, but we're going to take it chunks at a time <laughs> because you really have to like stop and absorb some of the bullshit being said. And not that Rebecca's words are bullshit, but the bullshit that's happening. Employees were told that Destiny 2 player sentiment was at an all-time low. Sources tell IGN they, that the issue had been flagged to leadership repeatedly for months prior to the layoffs, with employees begging for necessary changes to win players back. Well, that didn't happen. Yeah. We we heard about the Crucible Strike team, which, I mean, wonder if that's going to keep being a thing. I know that they meant... I, I know it was mentioned in a tweet that, oh, the Crucible Strike team is going to have something to say next week. I don't know how much longer that's going to be a thing. Yeah. Um, so if you're trying to cut costs, I would imagine that that and the free map pack are probably the first things to go. Yeah. Um, unfortunately. <laughs> Just uh, Parsons, uh, Pete Parsons, uh, took respo- or Bungie took responsibility for the layoffs rather than laying them off the feet of the parent company Sony. Pete Parsons told employees that the layoffs were largely due to the underperformance of Destiny 2 over the last year, as well as lower than expected pre-orders for the upcoming expansion, The Final Shape. Something really important that I, I think the article says it later on in here. When they say that, 
they missed their earnings projection by 45%. Yeah, that's uh that's a that's a big chunk to be missing. At my last company I worked at, we missed revenue projections by 3% and they fucking fired people. Yeah. And that was a company that brought in like a billion dollars in profit. Right. Well, I mean, look, when you have a have an expansion that's subpar and you have a year full of games like we just had, like Right. And Bife was kind of providing some of that context. And I do think it's important to take that comment in context. This has been one of the best years ever for individual releases. And every, like almost every major game that's come out this year that's been well received is a super long game. You know, Tears of the Kingdom, Diablo 4, Final Fantasy 16, Remnant 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Starfield, uh, Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty, Alan Wake 2. Every single one of those games is 30 hours or more. Yeah. Most of those are 50 or more. Yep. Spider-Man 2. So, you know, Spider-Man 2 just came out. Uh, God, man. Resident Evil 4 we released earlier this year. You've got you've got a slew of remakes. You've got a ton of indies. Like, this is one of the best years ever for gaming in terms of software. You were every single live service game got hit by a drop in players. Yeah. But, and I mean, Matt, Matt Piscatello was pointing to that. Circana's, uh, you know, player engagement tracker st- has had Destiny 2 in the top 20 for PlayStation and Xbox all year. It's been the top 10 for Steam all year. Yeah. It's number seven on the yearly charts on terms in terms of monthly active users. That's still, look, this game is not bleeding users despite what some people want to say on Reddit and Twitter. We, some of us are very vocal about this game. You're getting a very vocal minority, but mm-hmm. people are still playing this game continuously. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we are the minority, the people who pay in a year of week. subpar content. Yeah. I mean, most people are probably turning the game on and are like, oh, I'm just going to play the game. I don't know what's going on. I don't even know who Pete Parsons is, you know? I mean, uh, and, and that's like, that's, it is what it is. Right. But like Crota Zen came out last month and, or I guess two months ago now and it had, like rivaled the biggest numbers they'd ever had on Steam. Same with Root of Nightmares when it released. Like they're still hitting these peaks for these big things. And I think that, you know, leadership sees that and then is like, oh, well, we're not retaining that. And I think it's it's like this big feeling of we when we had this conversation before, players feel nickel and dimed. It is so expensive to be able to, be able to buy all relevant content for this game if you're new to it. You know, you think about how much we've spent over the years. It costs like $350, $400 to get every expansion, to get the dungeon keys, to get the 30th anniversary pack, the Forsaken pack, to get all relevant content, yeah. plus a final shape pre-order. It's like $350, $400 minimum right now. Right. That is not counting anything in the Eververse that you want. That's not counting any silver bundles. That's not counting event cards that they're pushing. There is a huge monetization problem with this game. And I think that a lot of the long term players, you know, I, we've been playing this game since the original, you know, alpha and beta. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never seen it this bad. This was the fear when Eververse was first introduced, right? Yep. In Destiny 1, we all were like, this is it. This is going to get bad. And I don't know that it really got. I think the prices were always egregious, but you could kind of ignore it because, oh, well, you know, it almost always comes around for bright dust. And now it's like, oh. It's not, Uh Um, you know, now you're looking at if you don't buy the deluxe version of the expansion up front, drop a hundred bucks up front, you are looking at spending like probably $140 over the course of the year to get all the seasons, to get the dungeon key, et cetera. And that's ridiculous. Event cards, that's nickel and diming. The cost of these armor sets, nickel and diming. And I, I will say all this with a caveat, still the cosmetics are not as egregious as your typical MMO. In terms of price, you know, you look at some of the ones in Final Fantasy 14 and it's be like 30, 40 bucks mm-hmm. just for a mount. Mm-hmm. You know, ESO, ESO is pretty bad about it, too. And it's like, well, at least Destiny is not like that. But those games it's close, have, though. How much content do those games have, though? Um, I mean, if if if, uh, you know, skins start costing, tw- you know, 15 bucks, 20 bucks, you know, what's next? 25. I mean, they bucks already or have. No, I mean, I mean, what's next? 25 bucks for a skin, like a crossover skin, you know? I mean, now the so to put things in perspective, uh, our friend Ray bought the spawn skin Mm -hmm. in Call of Duty Deer Night, and it was part of the battle pass. You had to buy the battle pass, and then he had to buy the levels to get to it. Mm -hmm. It cost him like 40 bucks just to get the spawn skin. Yeah. Like the Skeletor bundles and a few of the other Halloween bundles they had are like 30. 
Yeah. Another 25, 30 bucks to get a skin in Call of Duty, a game that is going to take it away from you in a year. Yeah. Um, I want I want to get back to Rebecca's article real quick though. There, there there's some there's a lot of important nuggets in here I think for understanding like the people side of everything. Um, one former Bungie employee recalled they were repeatedly assured following the Sony acquisition that there would be no layoffs and cited an item from Sony's quarterly report that claimed $1.2 billion of the $4 billion acquisition was going explicitly towards staff retention. Multiple employees confirmed uh, that money was distributed to employees who were fully vested with money split into multiple payments over time and varying based on discipline and seniority. Uh, other employees told IGN they felt especially frustrated with the layoffs given the company had completed work on a brand new headquarters, more than double the size of its previous office, and a price in it, it being a pricey upgrade in Bellevue, Washington. Um, that's, I mean, fair. That is a that is a massive, like, kind of beautiful headquarters in the pictures we've seen. Um, God, man. Uh, we have now, we have now, uh, heard of layoffs impacting community team, art, engineering, recruiting, legal, audio, QA, creative studios, and IT with impacts across both Destiny 2 and Marathon teams, including multiple members of the company's diversity committee and accessibility club. Those impacted are receiving a minimum of three months of severance and Cobra health benefits, though other company benefits were terminated immediately. Uh, employees claimed internally Bungie leadership has tried to, up, uh, obfuscate the uh, numbers and departments of those impacted while discouraging employees from asking questions on these topics in company chats. Uh, the ex- uh, employees expressed frustration about the layoffs, saying they felt decisions leading into the company's apparent money struggles were out of their hands and that those who were laid off were being punished for a problem they largely did not cause. Exactly right. The, the heads that need to start rolling when these things happen are the CEOs. You guys are the ones mismanaging this, but you're the one firing all the people and you're getting off scot-free. Yeah. Like, you know, now how many incidents do we now know of underneath Pete Parsons? You have the sexual harassment incident. You have the current legal fight that they're going on with the person who was probably wrongly terminated, the recruiter who was wrongly terminated. And now you have this. And at what point is enough enough? Like, at what point does Sony step in and be like, all right, you got to go? You got to go. You've been here forever. You you have been a constant through all the changes Bungie has gone through too. The le- leaving from Microsoft, leaving from Activision. You know when we go both times it was like oh we're striking out on our own. You know we don't need a corporate parent. And you know I would almost guarantee you in like two and a half years he's going to try to break Bungie out from Sony. I will almost guarantee you. Like clockwork. Yeah, I thought about uh, maybe around the time like whatever the second expansion or whatever for marathon i would say no or idea. even maybe at marathon's launch if they're especially if they're if sony's moving away from live service i wonder yeah i i just have no idea right now um i'm just like like i understand like uh and i'm gonna say some stuff first but stick with me here yeah go for it i understand that when business is down or, you know, you don't meet certain goals, people get laid off. I get it. But how do you mismanage something so bad that you have to lay off a hundred or so people when you're having like a, a great year still, despite everything else that's come out or is happening? You know, it's just like, it's frustrating and it and it pisses me off that people and I get that maybe pe- maybe not saying he is but you know given the picture here CEOs it's all like it's all about the money and what you can save and hitting goals and making your you you know hitting your bonus every month right mm-hmm. and now it's like people are people are now suffering like and maybe looking to move out of the state because they they you know you buy a house and then you have bills to pay or you know you have to feed your families and you know it's it just blows my mind man that like people just can't like you know give up a little bit so other people can have a little bit you know what i mean yeah also they bought that big huge he- uh what th- they bought like a invested in a new headquarters when people are still working from home too like well, so the headquarters was planned before covid i but i know i know that was in that w- they were in the middle of building it when covid happened um so they just went ahead and finished it um cuz the original blog post talking about it is from like 2019 i think yeah um cuz they were planning one here and they were building it they i don't think they ever built it they were planning to build one in amsterdam 
And I think that plan got canceled. Because they remember they were when they struck out, they wanted to be a third party publisher. Yeah. Um, and I mean that clearly has gone up in flames. Um <laughs> just man, I I don't even know, man. Um we we have we have several questions about the state of the game tonight. Yeah. Um, and we'll, we're gonna, we're going to talk about the delay here in just a second because I I do think that that's that's the other part of that. Um, one of one of my one of the questions that I was reading that uh <laughs> that I I joked that I was going to bust out my whiteboard tonight and I'm just I'm simply not because I sit in a I, I sit in a kitchen chair and it's very hard for me to move. Um. <laughs> Tiger Jesus writes in and asks us, if you had to make a blame pie chart on the current state of destiny, what percentage goes to Sony, Pete Parsons, Joe Blackburn, and whoever else you feel is responsible? Um, Man, I'm going to put like probably like 20% on Sony. Yeah. 20, 25% maybe. Um, I feel like there may have been a push there to, uh, to increase the revenue target, but the dungeon key was introduced before they even became a part of Sony. Yeah. So, well, also like, but I wonder if they were like in talks with Sony when, and then they're like, oh, let's do some, or they, they knew they wanted to be bought by someone. We'll say. I mean, so by the time the Witch Queen came out, they are like, by the time we found out about the dungeon key, I want to say that we already knew they were being purchased. Yeah. I don't remember the exact time, but I want to say we knew they were being purchased already. Um, Event cards were introduced after the purchase was finished. Yeah. Um, last uh, Festival of the Lost, I want to say, was the first one that we got. Festival of the Lost uh, during Witch Queen was the first time we got one of those. Yeah. Um, man. Uh, I would say that the most significant chunk of this, I would say like an overall, like if we gave 25% to Sony, I'm giving at least 65% to the executive suite at Bungie. So Pete Parsons, the board, um, yeah. probably HR. Um, I'm giving, a, I'm giving a lot of, I'm putting a lot of blame there. Um, because everything that I've seen from every single Bungie employee who is still there is nothing short of furious anger. Yeah. Um, I, I would, I mean, maybe like the last 10% can be allocated to like the game leadership team. So like Joe and Justin, but because ultimately things don't like, you don't miss revenue targets if, you know, like they're allowed to do what they want to do, but like we'll, we'll never know the full extent. I, I put so little of this on people like Joe Blackburn, because at the end of the day, he, yes, he is their leader, but he still answers to Pete Parsons. He still mm-hmm. answers to people like Luke Smith. Yeah. If anything, that last 10%, I'm willing to allocate to like Luke and Mark. Because I don't know what kind of hand they have in this, but they're franchise directors, then you are over people like Joe. Yeah. You are likely telling Joe, hey, we don't have the money to do that. Yeah. Um, I want to believe, and I and perhaps naively, I will continue to believe that Joe, given given the response to the state of the game when he came out and did that, did that uh, live stream for 15 minutes and talked about like things that he wanted to address that he did not like how that post was addressed. Yeah. Um, that makes me think that like he is still trying to fight for the players. Um, it's just a matter of like, and and there's been complete, understandably, there's been complete silence from him, uh, from Chris Barrett, the director of, uh, marathon, you know, there's been total and complete silence on those fronts. Mm -hmm. And I, that's probably the best thing that those guys could do for their rep, uh, for their image and reputation. That's probably the smartest thing you want to do. Yeah. Um, and I mean, the other two really aren't on social media that much. You know, Mar- Mark and Luke is all but gone from social media, and I don't blame him. Yeah. Uh, after Curse of Osiris, he largely disappeared. Yeah. And then um, Mark, you know, doesn't really tweet about Destiny stuff that much anymore. Um, just Jesus fucking Christ. Um, Stitchio6 writes in, uh, thoughts on the R-, R Path Forward release from Bungie? Uh, well, we, we already shared those. It, it's a little horse shit, but you weren't going to get anything else this week. If you, yeah. if you thought you were going to get a real statement, then yeah. I've got oceanfront property in New Mexico to sell you. I'm shocked they released anything today, to be honest. I mean, uh, I, I know they had to say something, but I'm shocked they put anything uh, up on their website. I thought it was just going to be like a yeah. tweet or something. Yep. I'm, I'm very shocked. I think that. I don't think that they thought they were handling this wrong until the backlash Pete Parsons got. Yeah. And then I think they went, Oh fuck. Yeah. I think Pete thought 
you know, oh, people believe in the bungee mission, you know, this and that. And th- lo and behold, <laughs> the, he I, I imagine that he is sitting there going, damn you, Jason Schreier. I imagine that that's what he's doing. He's he's just like cursing him constantly. Yeah. At this point, I imagine he's cursing Jason and Rebecca and, you know, Paul Tassi. I would have had him if it wasn't for those mangly kids. Um, Link Chef writes in. I suppose all I can ask is, do you think there's any path forward at all where the executives at Bungie who made the insane profit prediction are either humbled enough to make better decisions in the future or are replaced? I already know the answer. It's no, but maybe you have some hope that I don't have about any executive ever taking responsibility for their actions instead of the employees who didn't even make any of these decisions in the first place. Nope. Welcome to late stage capitalism. Yeah, I, uh, man, I wish I could It's funny if if you would have asked me this question not in the context of Bungie, I would have I, I would have thought that Bungie leadership would be the one to do this. And that, that's an insane amount of naivety on my part. Yeah. But if I was being asked this six months ago, I would have thought that Bungie would be the company that would take responsibility. You know, they haven't shied away from it in the past, um, which is why it's so shocking to me that Pete Parsons was just like how he was. And we're like, dude, Fuck you. Read the room, dude. Read the room. We fucking know what's going on, man. We're not stupid. We're we're not going to believe you over a hundred people whose tweets we've been reading all day. And just like you, you read some of the situations some of these people are in. Liana disclosed that she went through a cancer struggle this year. Yeah. Um, You know, she was through a fight with cancer. Like, and she got laid off. Her husband got laid off a month ago. Like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. And they, uh, didn't they just buy a house? Like, I mean, they bought a house like a year and a half ago or something. Yeah. Yeah. Odd. (laughs) I'm I'm ready. All right. I'm recording. Um, So, yeah, I mean, you you have people like that who, you know, they they uprooted their entire lives to come take, you know, what was supposed to be their dream jobs. And so, I mean, if you're if you're rejoicing in people losing their jobs at a studio, first of all, fuck you. Yeah. Um, Second of all, you can hate the studio. You can hate the game. But that doesn't mean people deserve to lose the lives that they've built over that. You know, like these, these are people who like, they just, they're there because they want to make a kick-ass game. They're there because they love Bungie games. They love Destiny. You know, I would wager every person at that studio grew up playing Halo or grew up playing Destiny. Destiny's been around at this point. I was talking to Saint in DMs earlier this week and he was like, man, this is just so weird. He's like, I've been playing Destiny since I was 13. Yeah. Like, oh my God, my back hurt at that comment. <laughs> was 22. Um, it, it's just this, it's this whole thing. And there's so many people commenting on this who like just don't have a lot of empathy or who like don't understand really what's going on. Like you want to direct your anger at anybody, direct it towards Bungie. Don't direct it at the poor people who were just trying to make a cool product. Yeah. You know? You, or, you know, trying to live first, you know? <laughs> yeah, like, just, you know, trying to live and this and that. And, I mean, just some insanely talented people who, who have all been let go. Um, so, I, I guess I would say, you know, Link, no, there there is no there is no world. It, the, the only way this happens is if Jim Ryan himself steps in. Because the way that the purchase agreement was structured for Bungie is they are separate of PlayStation Studios. They fall underneath SIE. But they yeah. are their own entity within it. Like Jim Ryan is the only person who could step in and tell them. And that I think would still largely be seen as a huge breach of Bungie's autonomy they were promised. Mm-hmm. But I mean, at a certain point, maybe I mean, you missed 45% in projections. Yeah, there's there's got to be some. I think sort you kind of got to step in and right? reshape I mean, it. I mean, at the very least, I think you got to tell Pete, hey, uh, you, you, my friend, are on thin ice in particular. Yeah. Um, I just, I really think that like the C-suite really is going to have to be talked to. Um, I, I hope that we see some changes there. I hope we see some turnover. But at this point, the only way that you can really move forward was something that I think would be a big, a big thing for fans. That these, these are words I didn't think I would say six months ago. Uh, a step forward with the fans, I think, and at this point, or like supporters of the studio would be get rid of Pete Parsons. Yeah. Pete, Pete's got to go. I'm sorry. He's got to go. Sorry, not sorry, actually. He's got to go. Yeah. Um, it's arguably time for some of those who are directing the franchise to go. I'm not necessarily calling for Luke Smith to be fired or for Mark Noseworthy, but it's it's time for the people you can't see at Bungie to have some turnover. 
Yeah. Because from what I understand, a lot of the decisions that were made leading up to this are from the people who are not publicly visible. I consider yeah. Luke and Mark to be publicly visible, even if they've largely retreated from social media. Yeah. I would too, by the way, because gamers suck. Yeah. I I mostly have. Yeah. Um. All right, um, Corey. Do we have do we have any other comments on on the the people of it all? I just I just feel bad, you know, because like yeah, it's just uh, it always sucks talking about this, but it especially sucks when we have to talk about you know, f- I mean, people we're friendly with from that studio or like yeah. you know, I mean, people we've been following for for a decade almost or you know the last i've never i've never years. seen people at a studio be so willing to talk about their work and be so open about where they work than bungee employees yeah i don't you just get don't this see it from others i mean i get it from like community managers and stuff and like there, there's people like it's at insomniac i think you'll get some of the higher ups at insomniac who are like that but yeah like it's either game directors or it's you know the community people, you don't see people from all different disciplines at the studio talking about how excited they are for everything all the time. Yeah. You know, remember all of, uh, every time they would tweet in all caps, Bungie, like yeah. that's going to ring really hollow. The next time I see something, I, I don't think we ever see that again. Yeah. Not without a major leadership turnover. Yeah. Which I think I, I think they need one. Like no they, they know it's not thick. They do. Yeah. But let's I mean, make zero mistake. Like link chef is completely right here. Like, their sh- heads should be rolling yeah. with the senior leadership there. And you're not independent anymore. Yeah. You were never owned by Activision. Like you were underneath the corporate head again, like you were at Microsoft. I think it's time for, yeah. it, it is time. I don't care if you have to pay them off. It is time for mm-hmm. some of these people to go. Yeah. I, uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. Parsons up to this, this point has seemingly done a, a decent job of having a team that, yep. the- great products right halo trilogy you know they turn destiny one around destiny two's become something that we love you know and uh marathon looks great but i think we need somebody that maybe can manage a this many people and you know try to bring the fun back to bungie you know and, and i'm not saying it needs to be a party house i'm just saying like you know you need to care more about the people than the checks that you are cashing I think. And I know that doesn't happen in corporate America, but I, I think it needs to. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's a reckoning coming for the gaming industry as a whole, I think. Yeah. Um, this this and the epic layoffs seem to like really like galvanize the public, though. Yeah. And I think more than anything. I mean, know, between these two studios, it was over a thousand people. I mean, it was closer to 2000, really. Like epic laid off over a thousand people <laughs> like. It, it, it's it's absolutely bonkers. I mean, you, you look at this and you go, when are we going to have the empathy again? Yeah. You know, the, these are people who make these games. Yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that, like, Fortnite players don't care about these issues, but, like, Destiny, the Destiny fan base and the Bungie fan base are very different from other gaming communities I've been a part of. They're so passionate, and there's such this interesting relationship between the studio and the gamers. Yeah. And it's I mean, been it's like the studio it's built like around the community. And it, and it has been since Halo CE. Yeah. Like, that's Bungie. You know, Bungie used to have, like, their seven steps for world domination, you know, was a thing, you know, yeah. back in the day. But, you know, you look at all the community thing, uh, all the community and all the activism that they've done and this and that. And, like, I saw somebody saying, like, oh, I feel like, and I don't remember who it was in the Discord. We, we've had, like, 300 comments in the Discord about this. So yeah. I'm, I'm not going to go cherry pick them all. Um, great discussion if you want to go catch up on it, by the way. But... Um, somebody said, you know, does this diminish the impact of, you know, their, their charity initiatives and like what, what, what they do, you know, with the, the kids in the hospital, their diversity initiatives, isn't that? No, it absolutely does not. Yeah. That stuff is the bungee that I love. That is the bungee I know and love. Well, there, there's, there's the quote unquote people bungee and then there's corporate bungee. Right. And it's important to separate the two here. Yeah. It's also important to remember that the people who are still there are suffering too. Yeah. They are just as upset about this as we are. Yeah. I mean, they lost. They are not to me. hold accountable. So like, and I'm not going to be one of those who's like, oh, no, cancel your final sheet pre-order. Do what you feel you need to do. Yeah. I genuinely debated about canceling mine. You know, and I think that that may be something that galvanizes, you know, the studio is like, oh, my God, people are canceling in mass mm-hmm. over what happened. And like, if you don't draw that correlation, then you really are just as stupid as you sound. Yeah. But. 
I guess when we get into the game of it, I guess let's shift into software here. There's a lot on this front. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it's unverified, but we, we, we I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm trusting Jason Schreier here. J- Jason's never not been reliable. Yeah. Um, you know, the reports that Final Shape, let's start with Final Shape, is going to be delayed until June 2024. Honestly, good. Um, even without this news, that would have been a that would have been cause for celebration. Yeah. Um, we have both said, Corey, you and I both shared this on this show. We felt like, especially after Lightfall, there needed to be a delay to the final shape. Give mm-hmm. it the give it the Witch Queen treatment. I yep. think it is more apparent than ever, especially if the final shape does hit. Mm-hmm. You need a year and a half between expansions, minimum. Yeah. World of Warcraft takes two years. Yeah, I would almost say two years, probably. I think post light and dark, you can probably do that. Yeah. Um, Especially since they're going to be ma- in managing marathon also. And like the new episode structure, like you could totally do that. I think with 650 employees, I would hope so. Yeah. Um, and then there, so, so I, first off, I think this is a good idea. I, I think it's a really good idea. A lot of our questions we got are about it. So I, I want to just like jump in on questions. Yeah. I mean, just to comment on the delay real quick, like you need yeah. that buffer too for, people who really care to gain that trust back again too at this point well so okay here here's my question before we jump into the questions we are now faced with another mega season and this is going to be the longest they've ever done seven months minimum yeah i say minimum because i'm not convinced that this is coming out in june um i would guess more like i genuinely think it's going to release on the 10th anniversary yeah um you know, draw the correlation, make a big celebration out of it. Like, oh, we were playing, you know, hey, we've got a whole celebration plan for you guys. And here, here's a little free pack. Um, how do you fill seven months, though? Like, so the last two times this happened, when it happened with going into Beyond Light, I think we were all understanding and we were mm-hmm. like, OK, it's COVID. Yep. They were already making the shift to working from home before that. So, you know, Bungie was kind of ahead of the curve there, you know, t- classic Bungie that we always think of. Right. Yep. And. But they were getting ready to vault all this stuff, and they had this whole, you know, Solstice was kind of built around the raids were being retired. They gave you all the cosmetics from them just from finishing them. I've never seen the community raid as much as they did for those five months. That distracted everybody. Yeah. Okay. But we all agreed Arrivals was such a long season. Yeah. It was so long. Yeah. And then you have the lead up to Witch Queen. We knew Witch Queen was going to be delayed right off the bat. They told us uh, they told us uh, in Season of the Chosen. Mm-hmm. Season of the Chosen launches in February of 2021, and they say, "Hey, we're not going to have a release this year. We're pushing the Witch Queen to Q1 2022 because we've been trying to get to a point where we can put our expansions out at the beginning of the year to make our year more understandable to the common player." Yeah. Which was a great delay because it was a great delay. It gave you, I mean, if that, so so from September to February, that's a six month delay, you know? Yeah. It's a six or seven month delay there. I think, um, Mm -hmm. cool. You had that much more time to polish and fix it. And guess what? Which queen is arguably the best expansion. There's a reason why in their own statement today, they say we are aiming for the quality we had with the witch queen, the taken king and forsaken. Mm Mm-hmm. Those are the standards by the community. Everything else is distantly after, as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah. Um, I would not disagree. No. And it's because they were treated as their own games also, yeah. I think, in, in large. Which large. I think that's why you need that two-year gap, too. Yep. 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 I, I totally each, agree. Treat each release as its own game. I, I totally agree. Um and, you know, the seasonal model as it existed could never have supported that, though. Yeah. And, you know, maybe episodes can, but, um, you know, I wouldn't be opposed to paying for another, you know, like $35, $40 season pass to give me a second wave of episodes to hold me over for the expansion. Yeah. You know, as long as it's good content, we'll, we will pay if it's good content. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you, you have that. They don't have a break glass in case of emergency move to do here. I saw, I think it was Blueberry's GG was trying to suggest this on Twitter. And I, I laughed at it because they were like the break glass in case of emergency moment is here. Unvault uh, to, to get gain back some player sentiment. Unvault all the content from the DCV. Let me tell you something. Unvaulting uh, Spire of Stars is not going to, uh, is not the saving grace you think it is. It's not going to move the needle. <laughs> no, it's, it's going to move it like 2% because, People weren't playing that content when it was in the game. That's part of the reason it was vaulted. 
Um, the second thing that they were suggesting was, um, I think it was, you know, put all the crucible maps in or something. I, I got, I got, I got to find this because I, I laughed at it quite a bit. <laughs> um, God, where is it? Here, here we go. I'm pulling it up now. Bring back all raids and campaigns from the DCV. Now, I will say bringing the campaigns back probably would be a good move. Um, add reprised or refre- and refreshed loot. Basically, Destiny 2's Age of Triumph. Unlike the 30th anniversary pack, make it free for all. Um, I'm just going to say right now, bringing all those weapons back when you have a diminished workforce already is a near yeah. impossible ask. Yeah. That's that's the that's the that and that's why I kind of like laughed at it. Like the Age of Triumph is a great idea, and I do think that's coming. I think that comes post Final Shape, though. Yeah, or maybe along with it. Like I will say this: I think if you're Bungie, you there's almost guaranteed to be a 10th anniversary pack. And I, I was kind of brainstorming this the other night with a friend. I was like, what if they moved that instead of releasing it on September? You know, in September, what if they moved it and dropped it in May or in uh, March for free for everybody and be like, hey, you know, we know we don't have a raid, but here, here's the reprised Wrath of the Machine. We have it done for you early. Yeah, um, that would be that would be a good move, I think. One but I don't think you I don't think you can do that, though. Yeah, I mean, I don't the, the logistics of it is my problem. Yeah. And like, I mean, you don't know how many engineers were laid off either. Like, yep. these are just like the front. We have no idea. People. QA is basically gone. Yeah. And a lot of this they mentioned was going to be outsourced to. Oh, now. my good, good Lord. I, I will say I, I saw some panicking over, um, you know, probably a lot of the community stuff was going to be and PR was going to be outsourced. And I want to say like the community stuff. OK, we, we may need to worry a little bit out chat gpt is not going to happen though um, i'm going to assure you that chat gpt is not happening in terms of, like the pr and comms like overall comms from the studio first off i do think that this is going to move them away from being super personal with us given yeah. the incidents of the last couple of years yeah um probably not the worst idea i saw somebody like, i mean oh, the, the Dest- that destiny 2 dev account is going to disappear off twitter and reddit and i was like good <laughs> I actually think they're going to lean more into the Destiny Two teams account. Yo, of, yo, assholes! So instead of like the per, like the personal, no, account. the personal one, the per, per, contacting community managers for this game on social media is gone forever. Yeah. Um. But in terms of like PR, there are specific agencies to handle that for games, and that's likely who they're going to go to. They would they won't go to some small firm. They will go somewhere big like Golan, who specifically has a video game department. They do Nintendo's communications, by the way. Mm-hmm. So, like, all Nintendo's press releases come from them. Yep. And it's been the same dude for, like, 15 years. That Those are the kind of people that will handle these accounts. Yep. So, I guess get it, getting into... So, now, get, kind of getting into some of these questions that we have. I'm, I'm saving the marathon discussion for last. Because that's... There's a lot of weird stuff that we've heard around there. And I kind of want to dissect what is real and what's not. Mm-hmm. Sammy writes in... To preface this, it is more important that we know the real bad thing here is the layoffs. It's hurt a lot of people's livelihoods and is a practice we've seen for far too much in the industry this year. That being said, speaking about the game itself, do you think that the game will make it to the episode's post-final shape at this point? The amount of layoffs makes me genuinely concerned for the future of the game. These people have poured so much into making it. it it's making it. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert, it's making it because they don't have any other source of income or revenue. Yeah. Yep. They have to, even if they're passionate, even if you said nobody at Bungie wants to work on Destiny anymore, guess what? They have to for at least several more years because there's no guarantee Marathon is going to be a hit at all, yeah. especially now. And the thing is, this I mean, even if like Destiny isn't what it once was after the final shape or whatever, like it's going to be the same thing as World of Warcraft because guess what? World of Warcraft still makes money and Destiny still makes money. And it's like it's a reliable source of of revenue yep. for them, even yep. if other things yep. are going on. Yep. So they, they have to, they have to keep that revenue stream going. So for better or worse, they're going to continue making destiny content. Mm-hmm. Now, whether people engage with it or not, is another thing entirely, which leads us to our next question from the Deaky. Is it over? Is destiny officially dead with how much of their finest talent they've axed? I cannot see the final shape being good. No matter how much they delay it. How do they even come back from this? It's not dead. It's not Joe over. It is like, I'm not going to say it is what it is. Yeah. The layoffs have happened. The people who are still there still want to make a good game. I want to be very clear about that. Yeah. 
we've we've heard whispers and rumors. I think it was Last City Radio was sharing this. They they follow all the music from Destiny and archive it online and things like that. They shared that um, to their knowledge, the score for the Final Shape was recorded over the summer, mm-hmm. um, underneath the underneath the production name, obviously in Nashville. So the music is supposedly confirmed for are composed for the Final Shape already. Mm-hmm. Um. We didn't see a lot of leads let go. I'm going to be honest. We saw we saw some people let go like across the spectrum. The people who are still there are still very talented. Yeah. For example, most of the narrative team is intact. Yep. You know, a lot of the narrative team is intact. That that alone continues to give me hope. Maybe it's foolish, maybe it's silly. That alone continue and, and I mean, I want I want to be clear like I think the final shape can come out and still be a good product because so much work has already been done. The yeah. real test is going to be, are the episodes good? Are yeah. is whatever comes next it's, still going to be good? 650 people is a lot of people to work on this game, though. That's a lot of talented people. Yeah. They've recruited so much top talent from across the industry and coming out of university and stuff. Yeah. I am a little worried about, like, you know, all these people let go, like the workloads being put on other people. Yep. And that's why like, I think, I, I think the June in, date may be optimistic. This is probably a September release. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure after this, they want to definitely avoid the crunch discussion yep. <laughs> six months from now. Oh, my Lord. Can you imagine? Uh, yeah. Sadly, I can. That's the problem. <laughs> like that happens everywhere. Um, Which look, uh, I don't I don't and like if it's I don't mind people like, oh, I want to you know, I want to I want to work over because I'm so passionate about this project. Right. That's mm-hmm. different than like forced crunch. Right. Yeah. That's different from like the 14 hour days that we hear reported on yeah. certain games. Yeah, because uh, and this, I know this might sound weird to people, but like the creative process isn't a nine to five process, right? Like sometimes yeah. you need to like I like to stay up late and and work on stuff late because that's what I like to do. Yeah. Or you know, I prefer to work in the evenings myself. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, at my job, I stay later because our events are later in the night. Yep. And like, you know, it, it's just, and I mean, you make content on the side and everything else. Like, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I mean, I get it. That's, that's like, a labor of love there. Yeah. You know, we, we do this in our spare time because we love doing it. Yeah. So it's, uh, but like, so, man, force crunch is just like the, definitely the conversation they want to avoid. Oh At my god! Cost, and especially as a Sony studio, because that's been such a huge topic around Naughty Dog and Santa Monica. Yeah, you know, and whereas Insomniac is the exact Insomniac is like the shining beacon of worker empowerment right now, right? Yeah, don't they only have four day work weeks? I they just they, insti- they just instituted it, I think, but they are a fully remote studio now. Like yeah. them and Bungie were kind of being held up as like these gigantic pillars, and it was like, please don't look too hard into Naughty Dog. Look at look at Bungie and Insomniac instead. Um, and I want to be clear that this is not just a Sony problem. I know it sounds like I'm really ragging on Sony. Microsoft had a lot of problems earlier this year with 343 specifically. They've yeah. had problems with 343 for years. Yeah. Um, they did some layoffs at the coalition, which we thought was safe. Yeah. They, you know, they then layoffs there. Whereas like teams like playground are hiring, you know? Yeah. It, it's, it, it, it's just very, it's very strange. I know that a lot of folks at Xbox and Nintendo were like, Hey, you know, Bungie, Bungie guys c- come work for us. Yeah. Come work for us, man. Um, yeah, I wonder. I think it would be kind of funny if uh, Salvatore went to three four three to score the next Halo game. That's what a lot of people said. They were like, "Oh my god, wh- wh- he he should just he he should come. Him and Marty should team up." And like, oh, we don't we don't really want Marty these days. Yeah, didn't um, didn't Marty go off the deep end at some point? Yes, uh, repeatedly. My man like jumped off the edge, climbed back up, and jumped again. Yeah. So um, I want I do want to address Nadiki's last question here. How do they even come back from this? Um, Time. We kind of addressed this with Link Chef's question, but it starts with accountability from the top. And if you don't have that, then you probably don't fully recover from this. Gamers th- gamers don't forget. <clears throat> if, I, if you need any finer example, look at all the things that Xbox has done over the last 10 years, and still the number one thing brought up is the Xbox One reveal. Oh my god, yeah. And the sharing games video. Yeah. One bad PR incident can basically ruin your brand. Bungie's brand for me is ruined right now. Yeah. It is going to take 
I mean, like, and I want to be really clear. We're, we're going to talk about Final Shape here. We got some questions about it. Um, I am still going to play the Final Shape. Regardless yeah. of my feelings, I'm still playing the Final Shape. Now, will I be super engaged with the seven-month season? No. Yeah. And you will, you will see a player decline during that that you will not recover from. You will not. Your profits are going to continue to drop because there are enough of us who are angry and there's enough mega games. I had the sigh of relief reading Jason's headline that, oh my God, if nothing else, the only good thing coming out of this is that Final Shape is going to be delayed. It is now out of February. I can now enjoy Persona and Final Fantasy to 100 hour games without killing myself. Yeah. So I'm breathing a sigh of relief. Because there's two, and I mean, that's without counting the next Yakuza is coming out in January. Like, there are there are some mega games already planned. Yeah. Going into June, June's traditionally a pretty a pretty slow month. That would be a, that is a smart business decision. That's the only smart one you've made this week. <laughs> You're putting it out in a fairly dead month. If I had to guess, it's probably coming out June 18th. That's the week after traditional E3 week. Yeah. Um, you're probably putting it out then because that way you're getting the raid out before 4th of July weekend. Yeah. Um, that's my guess. If it doesn't come out June 18th, maybe middle of July or into September. We, we got to ask that. We, somebody else asked that. I think a jiggly pant asked that, uh, you know, do we see it being delayed? Like, uh, yeah, I still think that this is probably a September release ultimately, but if you go into September, you're really going to see those earnings drop. Cause first off, that means that you have a nine or 10 month season going. Number two, that means that you now have to compete with the fall releases. Yeah. And there's some big RPGs planned for next year. There's some, there's a lot of first party Sony stuff that's planned for the latter half of next year. I believe other live service games from them that have not been canceled. So that's just what we know about. (laughs) That's not counting anything else. So, uh, good luck there. Um, yeah. Fox writes in, in lieu of draws air circle, this mess, do you think this has cemented your hop off point at the final shape? It's becoming more apparent from month to month that most players will be leaving the scene around that time period. I, I don't think that it's necessarily most players. I think it's the very vocal, chronically online players. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of content creators are going to exit. Uh, Ascendant Nomad is pretty much in- indicated he's going to. Datto has been hinting at this since Lightfall. Yeah. That uh, that may be like when he stops caring about like rating on day one and like he he may leave. He may just be around for the story at that point. Yeah. Well, um, it's, it's also been compared to like also like the end game. Right. And like, yeah, you know, what comes after is, you know, yeah. as of this recording, I don't it doesn't really feel like Mar- Marvel has a plan. Right. But they they have. Oh my God, I that, mean, that's a whole nother conversation. With I know. That variety but I, article. I'm saying like these I want yeah. these episodes will be like, you know, a good, obviously, I think these episodes might be a good jumping on point for people who've been interested, but I also think it's a clear jump off point for people who are have been with this game and they just are yeah. like, I this seems like a good ending for me. I've I've talked about this a lot on socials and in discord this week. Um, I was already kind of leaning towards Final Shape being my exit point from like, oh, my God, I'm going to grind a season passes in Destiny. Mm hmm. Um, especially after the awesome year we've had this year, it just kind of, that really reinforced. I was starting to feel it last year, um, and it wasn't even like that. I was that I wasn't enjoying the content. It's just I was tired, mm-hmm. um, and I, I get in these cycles um, regularly with this being you know an always updated game and whatnot. Um, I I think I mean I'm going to play through the campaign of the final shape. And I'm going to do the raid. And then I'm probably putting the game down for quite a bit. I don't think I'll play the first episode right when it comes out. Um, I will probably wander away from Destiny for a substantial amount of time. I have already prepaid for the episodes, so I will check them out eventually. But I think the final shape ends my concern with getting all the seasonal titles, getting all the weapon blueprints and things like that. Like I... I will always love the Destiny universe, regardless of what Bungie decisions are made at corporate. Decisions that are made at Bungie corporate. I will mm-hmm. always like the Destiny universe. I will always love it. I mean, like you guys, you guys can take one look in my background. You can see all the de- you can see the Destiny stuff there. You don't even see what's like all sitting up above my desk. Like, mm-hmm. very few games have had the impact on me that Destiny has. You know, 
And I'm not just going to like walk away from that, but this does feel like, and for me, it's more of, I will have played this for about a third of my life when final shape comes out. Yep. I'm ready for something new. Yep. Um, and that, that's all it is. Like, I, I'm really just kind of ready for something new. But at the same time, there's there's always that little bug that's like, but nobody makes a game that feels like a Bungie game. Yeah. There's a reason why I'm still playing Halo releases all these years later. You know? Yep. There's a reason why I still keep coming back to Destiny. I love the gunplay. I love the abilities. Like, it is different from any other game out there. Mm-hmm. You know, the the lore. I love the story. I love the lore. I like the characters, even if they're vastly underdeveloped for what they should be at this point. Um, yeah. I love the raid. I love raiding. I love doing dungeons. But I'm also not the kind of person who likes to grind out the same stuff a million times. I want to just do a couple runs and then be done. Yeah. So I, I think that, like, less of me jumping off forever, but, like, less of me buying like the hundred dollar versions mm-hmm. me buying more a la carte yeah or you know whatever yeah um I, I think that those are those are pretty big things for me to sit there and go okay i'm gonna more transition into like a true a true tower casual so to speak yeah um that's kind of like the next step in my destiny journey i think like and th- this all everything this week just really reinforced it for me like it reinforced the notion that the bungee that I fell in love with when I was a kid is tr- good and truly gone. Yeah, you know, it took twenty something years to kill to kill my optimism, but here we are. Hmm. Um, you know, I've been a, I've been playing bungee games since I was like ten years old. Yeah, you know, the thing that you want your ten year old playing is definitely Halo CE. Hmm. Um, but you know, I, nothing will ever take the mem- take away the memories I've made of bungee games, but. I don't know that I'll be creating any new ones. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, it's out of, it's in a, it's in a weird spot. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, for, I, I mean, like, like you, I'm going to keep playing obviously, but like, you know, I, I've already kind of started that trajectory to shift off to other games and, you know, it's, uh, I want to see how this ends. I want to see how it ends. I want to see how this ends. I also want to see. I want to know what their plan is because Mm -hmm. they've said they're going to share details about the next season, which guess what? That's probably why we didn't hear about the next season or about the delay right now is because they got to get their ducks in a row because they fired everyone who would do that. Yeah. Um, I want to see what they do leading into the next season. But they said after that, they're going to share the details about the the bridge, the final shape They're They have to. And I cannot emphasize this enough they have to share those details before the holidays Mm -hmm. before we get to christmas they have to share those details i would expect things to be pretty quiet on the comms front from now until they make those announcements though even though you're gonna have a new season drop before then even though you're gonna have a new dungeon drop before then i would expect it and i would expect the reception of this no matter how good that content may be pretty muted um we're not going to stop covering the game on here i want to be really clear but I think it's important that, you know, like if we say like, oh my God, like this is like, oh, the dungeon was awesome. That doesn't mean that the faith in Bungie is back. It means, man, those people made some really kick-ass content. Like I'm happy for the people who are still there and knowing that they're going to keep making kick-ass content, regardless yeah. of the decisions being made outside their pay band. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's not, I don't think it's a bad thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, but, ter- terrible people can create amazing things, right? Yeah. I mean, this this is a very hyperbolic example, right? But Josh, what do you think of when someone says Hitler? World War II. Oh God, Hitler, Hitler, the Hitler as an artist analogy. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, I a, a less insane example. Yeah. Um, I don't I don't care for I didn't care for Ronald. Re- I don't care for Ronald Reagan's legacy as a president, but he was a great actor. George Bush, you know, has you know, Call of Duty. They, oh my <laughs> fucking god! Call of Duty, Call of Duty, War Crimes too. Um, you know, George George Bush. You know, a lot of us don't like him. You know, he's gone and made you know a second career as you know doing being a painter and stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, and um, now if he's any good, is up for debate. But the point remains. You know, J- Jimmy Carter. You know, great man, great president has done so much doing habitat for humanity since he got out of office. Yeah. Um, you know, there there are. 
people that you don't like can still make really good things. Uh, David Jaffe is someone I highly disagree with on a number of topics. He made God of War. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have God of War without him. You know, yeah, Corey Barlock's the face of the franchise. Guess what? You don't get God of War without David Jaffe. You don't get Twisted Metal without David Jaffe. Twisted Metal Black. Yeah. Like some of my favorite games ever. You don't, you don't get that without him. So, yeah, I can, I can sit here and hate Pete Parsons all I want for this bullshit. But then I'm going to remember how kick-ass the narrative team is. I'm going to remember how good the the gameplay team is. How, you know, infuriated I may get occasionally with the UI team. Yeah. Uh, or the economy team, you know, I'm going to, but I'm going to think of the, I'm going to think of the raids. I'm going to think of, I'm going to think of raids. I'm going to think of the dungeons, you know, I'm going to think of all the good times that I've had and the content that I know is still going to come, but it's always going to be top tier. That's always going to be good. No matter what the art team, God, look at the art in this game, the sky boxes, things like that. Like, I mean, there's nothing like going through deep stone crypt and hearing the lullaby and the spacewalk. Right. I mean, and then they fired the person who wrote it. <sighs> yeah. Let's let, let's get in. Let's get into the last topic for tonight. Uh, I'm going to try and go through this pretty quickly. Marathon, uh, marathon. I think was the big question mark that a lot of us were going to have when we started here about layoffs. Mm-hmm. And I, until we started getting direct confirmation that people from Marathon have been laid off, I thought Marathon was safe. Um, it is not. Marathon has had some people fired from its team. We we don't. That's the one we really don't know the scope of right now. Yeah. How many people were from Marathon? Um, but they did fire like their senior marketing person for Marathon, which is bizarre. That is, in, that's absolutely insane. Like one of the things supposedly said to them in a meeting was, uh, "Can you please be excited? Can you please be excited and uh, share your excitement for Marathon with the same uh, fervor that you do with uh, Taylor Swift?" <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my god, what a, like just what a shit ass thing to say to somebody." They were also supposedly told by a higher up. Um, that uh, you're going to have to choose between uh, your job and your, or your career and your family. Yeah, I, I saw that too. Um, and th- th- this this individual has said they are probably leaving games forever after this. By the way, um, the marathon of it all. So the reason why I'm kind of giving this its own thing because it, it isn't really talked about in everything else. As the cross put out a video yesterday, and it got pretty controversial pretty quickly. Um, because it really, there were some claims made that I think a lot of us immediately rolled our eyes at and we're like, there's no fucking way. Like there's no fucking way. Yeah. He claimed over the last 48 hours that a group of play testers were invited to come try out, uh, a group of, uh, escape from Tarkov players were invited yeah. to come try out marathon last year at Bungie and the reception was underwhelming. Supposedly they asked during the play session, you know, Hey, if this came out tomorrow, how many of you would play it? Nobody raised their hand. Games are fucking pre alpha. Nobody's going to be buying and playing this game for like three more years. I know. Um, that, so that sparked an entire saga. Um, he had the follow up on this. Tom Henderson got involved. Um, who I would trust Tom Henderson over a random, not that he has to cross as random. And I fully believe that he talked to people who have played it um, because Tom Henderson backed up that there was a, uh, there, there was a, uh, what you call it. There, there was a play test. Yeah. At one point, I'm trying to find exactly what Tom said. I got to scroll through his replies real fast. He replied to somebody. He didn't actually tweet it out. Um, Oh my God! We're, uh, for what it's worth, I heard late last year from three different people who played it. It was a lot of fun and had similar gunplay to Destiny. It means jack shit now that we're a year on and a lot of changes. But yeah, um, asked across then released a follow up video and Fran Fran Mirabella, God bless Fran, summed it all up. So I'm going to read Fran's summary of this. <laughs> Uh, updates from and- Astacross and a source of unknown position, but Astacross like tripled down on this person and was like, I fully trust them. They've been in the industry for years. I have no reason not to trust them. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, Marathon was always an extraction looter shooter. Bungie only entertained briefly making it a battle royale. That was something that his source said like, oh, at one point Marathon was a battle royale and Bungie pivoted to extraction and Astacross had to come out and be like, oh, oh. No, it's actually not true. Um, Bungie's original goal was to have four games. Destiny, Marathon, Matter, and an unknown title. Marathon supposedly was canceled in December 2020. 
uh, which I think that's surprising to all of us. I think we thought that Marathon was matter. Uh, I kind of thought it was a different okay thing. Uh, well, yeah, I guess, I guess we did think it was different. That was supposed to be like the their answer to like shooter. Overwatch. That was supposed to be like their Overwatch game. Yeah. Um, and the uh, the other one pretty clearly feels like that's the mobile game. Jeez. Um. Most devs from Destiny 2 working on Marathon are folks that were burned out from working on Destiny. Upper management is full of folks you have never seen before. Um, yeah. So that those were the updates. The original stuff that he posted. Marathon was originally a battle royale. Not received well by Tarkov streamers. Uh, before stating it, said, friend of mine reached out yesterday. News you need to share with everyone. I trust this source, someone who's been in the industry for years and has connections. Astacross goes on to say the following, but says everything is speculation after this point, but has things to back it up. He seems mostly directed at his continued comments that he believes Marathon is Bungie's focus and new baby. He has been one of the ones pushing this for like, since like the Marathon reveal. Yeah. I don't, again, I'm not like trying to like incite like a pitchfork and torch mob, but Astacross has like been on this fucking kick since like May. Yeah. Of all, oh, they're going to abandon Destiny for Marathon. Like, there's no guarantee that this is going to be a hit. We, we all played Destiny because we loved Halo. Also, I think people, <laughs> some people might prefer Destiny over an extraction shooter. Who the fuck wants to play an extraction shooter? <laughs> That's the question. I mean, I, I'll i check it out for sure, but like, fuck if I even care about extraction shooters. Like, what? There's, what, two major ones and one is about ready to be shut down in Rainbow Six Extraction, right? Like... <laughs> Yeah, you have Tarkov, you have that, you have the Dark Zone stuff in uh, Division. Yeah, and I hated the Dark Zone. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't think that, like, I mean, like, Tarkov's really the only successful one. Just like, I mean, kind of like Destiny's really the only successful game of its kind, you yeah. know? Um, we, we can argue all day long about, like, oh, was, was the Division successful? But the fact of the matter is, Destiny is putting out content, like, every couple months. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I find a lot of that, like, really hard to believe. Mm -hmm. Um. And I'm not saying that Cross is lying. It's just it kind of fits his narrative that he's been trying to push for a long time. Yeah. Um, I personally think his source is kind of full of bullshit. Um, I do not believe for a second that Bungie entertained making a battle royale. Yeah, I don't think so either. I don't believe that for a fucking second. Um, They're not really one to uh, follow the uh, the trends. No, they tend to make their I mean, the two examples we have are Halo and Destiny. They basically make their own thing. And I mean, it's important to remember, like projects change in development. Projects do change in development all the time. So, like, I just I don't see how you pivot from a battle royale to an extraction shooter, though. That's such a radical difference. Mm -hmm. um, Halo was originally an RTS, though, and became a first person shooter in the 18 months before launch. Basically, once Microsoft bought them. Yeah, um, that that's probably like the most extreme one of the most extreme examples in gaming history. And, you know, lo and behold, though, Halo set the standard for FPS games and the FPS revolution on consoles, especially. Yeah. Shooters were really like uh, outside of like GoldenEye were really like majorly a thing on PC. Yep. Um, and, you know, then it was like, oh, my God, like the way to play these is definitely with a controller and like, holy shit, we can we can like land we can land link our Xboxes and this and that, you know, you. <laughs> How many, how many companies can say that they made a title and that's the reason that the system even exists? It's like <laughs> them and Nintendo can say that. Yeah. Like Super Mario Brothers and Halo. Right. <laughs> that that's that's some insane pedigree right there. Yep. Um so I I would say that I don't I don't I would take any marathon claims you hear very cautiously this is a game that they were they were adamant was not even approaching an alpha state remotely yeah. back in may and june yep um there have been internal play tests we do know they've done internal play tests tom henderson seems to back up that there was at least you know an event where they did invite some people to come play underneath strict nda i saw some freaking out that no destiny creators were invited yeah it's a totally different type of game yeah you want to invite people who are playing the number one game yeah. Tarkov. off. You yeah. want to invite them up here to play this. Yeah. Um, so I guess to kind of like wrap up, um, what an absolute shit show. Uh, I don't have, I don't have a nice way of saying this. 
it's it's a complete shit show. There is no nice way to say this. Um, Bungie senior leadership, and when I say senior leadership, I mean the C suite. I mean Pete Parsons and people who are you know directly you know at his or just below his level. Um, yeah, I have no sympathy for them. I don't want to hear how bad they feel. Yep. Um, I don't really fucking care about your feelings. You made these projections. You are the reason that these people are laid off. You are the reason that community trust, which already was pretty, I mean, it's, it's always been a seesaw battle, right? And in a day, in today's day and age, all it takes is one incident to destroy that trust forever. I don't know that Bungie ever gets the reputation and trust it had amongst players back ever again. I, I would say that with an asterisk, if they make some changes at the top and kind of, (sighs) You know, it's not going to be right away. It'll be a year or two yeah. or three. But you know, if they the, the, this is going to haunt them forever. Yeah, like that. That's why like I brought Activision up the and Blizzard. Well, I mean, that's why. Yeah, the the Blizzard stuff. But I mean, like that's why I brought up you know something that would a lot more innocent with the uh, you know the Xbox One reveal that is brought up all the time. Yep. Still, ten years later, they completely turned the ship around. Totally new leadership. It is still brought up all the time. This is going to follow and haunt Bungie forever. The internet does not let things go. So you can make changes. And we may think, like, you know, a year or two down the line, like, man, Bungie, Bungie kind of turned the ship. They kind of turned this ship around. Yeah. I mean, but, there's there's one thing I think gamers like more than to, you know, attack everybody on the internet. I think people really like a good redemption story. I'd agree um, with that. I don't know what that looks like for Bungie if there is one within the foreseeable future, but I think that it's not in the foreseeable future. I'll I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and save everybody that, you know, the, the, the thinking portion of this podcast Uh, there. It's not, there is nothing you can do in the, uh, there's nothing you can do in the short term. Yeah. Um, this is going to take years to rebuild this trust. Yep. You'll, you'll get some people who I just really like are kind of out of the loop. Like you'll be like, Oh oh my God, like these changes are, like, I guarantee you, you're going to see it from a few people after the next swap. Guaranteed. You're going to see a few more after the delay announcement and, you know, oh, here's what we're doing over the next seven months. Um, you're not going to hear it from me. I mean, I may have some positive things to say. Like, saying positive things doesn't mean that you believe in the direction or right. that you're okay with what's happening. It just means, like, hey, you're you're discussing what's happening and, like, oh, yeah, well, that's a step in the right direction. But... I'll tell you right now, for me, they got a lot of distance to cover. That's a lot of steps. Yep. It's a lot of steps in one in one swoop. On October 30th, 2023, y'all pretty much shattered the illusion every person had of you. Mm-hmm. We, you know, Bungie for so long has been held as like this beacon of being above the bullshit. And here we go. Yep. Nobody is above it when it comes to money. Nope. So, um, I really hate to end on a depressing note, but, uh, that's, that's our show. Yeah. Um, any final thoughts, Corey? I, I just, (laughs) I feel like as soon as we get on some sort of good path that something like this happens and I hate putting episodes out like this, you know, but it's the news. It's what's happening. It's a, it's a game. We would be doing you a disservice if we didn't do this. Yeah, it would, uh, it wouldn't feel right if we didn't do it. But just be noted that I hate doing episodes like this. I want to be excited. I want to be, you know, I want to provide positive, fun episodes for everybody, right? Like, I mean, I'm sure Mm -hmm. you do too, Josh. I'm tired of talking about layoffs and sexual harassment accusations and, you know, terrible. (laughs) We're tired of talking about it with Bungie and Bungie has it the least of anybody. Yeah. That's the that's the wildest statement about all of this, I think. Yeah, it just it really sucks. And, um, you know, hopefully then over the next couple months or go or a couple weeks or so, we'll come out of this and have a positive show for you. But this is this is really put like a big. Big red disappointment on Bungie and Destiny for me, like I had a hard time turning it on on Tuesday, to be honest, Um yeah, um, I logged in Monday night to because I remembered I hadn't finished the triumph that gives you the uh, the all black memento. And mm-hmm. I was like, well, I might as well do this because who knows? If I'm going to be playing in a year. I might as well let my weapons look cool. Um, logged in that real quick and then turned it off. And I really haven't had a desire to log in since. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, part of that's because we're we're at the end of the season. I've already done the story. Uh, there's just there's other things to play right now, and there's other things going on in my life. Um, why do I want to do this when you know I'm about to have a you know new Fortnite pass this week? I got a new Halo one la- uh, a couple weeks ago. You know, yeah. Persona Five Tactics comes out in a few weeks. I'm excited for that. I'm gonna probably play Mario. R- I'm playing Mario RPG when it comes out. I'm probably gonna play Call of Duty. Like, yeah. yeah. I've got Alan Wake Two that I need to purchase still. <laughs> yeah. Um, I uh, don't forget yeah. the most important expansion coming out, Josh. Disney Dreamlight Valley. Yep, first paid expansion. So I mean, um, well, I'll, I'll save some of the I'll save some of the other questions we got tonight. We we got we got some from some of you guys, but most of y'all um, seem to understand. Uh, the, oh, <laughs> I probably should have worked this in. Uh, eh, we'll save it for next week. We'll save it for next week. Okay. Um. All right. Let's let's get out of here. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Uh. Thank you, everybody, for watching and or listening to this episode of Tower Casuals. Um, I really I need to catch up on that conversation in the discord, but uh, join the discord. We have a great community for Destiny players and, you know, gamers as a whole. So so join it. Check out our sister podcast, Xbox Casuals, that Josh also is my co-host. So, Josh, thank you for your time tonight, as always. Uh, Where can we find you? Josh underscore Finn, two ends. If you come, beware. It's going to be World Series hype for like the next week, probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm sad that I will never experience anything like the 2016 Cavs championship. So, because the Browns I mean, suck. You arguably have like the best championship of all time, though. So, yeah. But you literally got called Believe Land after that. I so, know. I. Trust me, I, I did not believe until the final out happened. Like a buddy of mine, one of my best friends, like my entire life, was like, "Dude, I believe they're going to do it, man. They're going to do it." And he's a he's a Giants fan, mm. so they beat us in 2010 for their first title in San Francisco, Ooh. and he was like, "Dude, they're going to do it. They're going to do it, man. Trust, trust it, trust in, trust in Bochi, trust in Bruce Bochi." And uh, when uh, we got to the bottom of the ninth last night, I was text. I was just like in all caps, like texting him, being like, "I I did not sit down for most of the game." I was just pacing back and forth in my dad's living room, and uh, I was like, "Oh, that's it, man! Build the fucking statue! Build the fucking statue! Build I don't even statue. care. Build the fucking statue! Let's go!" You're gonna tell me you wouldn't you wouldn't want them to build a statue of LeBron when he's done? They are. They already said they were. They already said. I mean, we have a statue of Dirk. So yeah, but Dirk played for them the the entire time. The entire sure. Dirk Dirk's original statue looked very different than how it turned out. I'll have to share that with you off air. Um, let's get out of here, Corey. All right. Uh, Thanks, everybody, for watching and or listening. And until next time, we love you. Goodbye.